for the singing of our national anthem by Kate Caitlin Holders. Welcome to the 2015 Shoe KC All-Star Game. I'm Zach Fisher here with Casey Jones. And uh, broadcasting for one last time with Casey. We spent two years over at Bobcat Network, and now we're done after the nice state run by the Bobcats. And I just got to say, it's nice to see all these seniors that we've seen most of them play, and it's great to see them back. It, it really is, and um, props to David Brox and his crew for setting this up for these seniors. Going through introductions right now, Casey and I will need to pay attention to the KCL side mostly because we did not see a lot of the women's basketball over on the KCL side this year. But during warm-ups, you could tell these girls were all excited to be here. Just a good overall environment. We really see a lot of these girls' coaches here as well, and um, this is also a great opportunity for the coaches to learn as well as the players with different styles of how players play and how coaches coach. You had a good fan base here too. You can see you know, representatives of fans from uh, every single team. Also, they have a MVP trophy to be fighting for. This is what I like. I like always watching NBA All-Star games, and I like just seeing different personalities much together to see, a, you know, kind of a dream team of both of these leagues. And there's a lot of there's a lot of talent within this senior All-Star game here. The KCAL team may be at a little bit of a disadvantage height-wise, but they look very talented here just watching them in warm-ups. And that's not necessar necessarily saying they're a small team. They, they got some good-sized players as well over like KCL side. It's, I also like how every single team is represented from the league. And 
And there's a three-point uh, contest as well for the boys All-Stars and the girls All-Stars and a dunk contest uh, for just the boys after this game. KVL girls now getting their picture and after that we'll get to playing. I already said it, but I'm just excited to see how these all personalities mash together. Looking forward to a very high-scoring game or a very defensive game. We'll find out soon. Just been told, uh, David and Vernon, you know, they've been commentating all year at Shoe KC. Now they're coaching against each other. It'll be really interesting to see, you know, how that works out. If they're, I'd, I'd like to see them get competitive, you know, get into it. I, I know that's what I would do if I was coaching. And right off the bat, the KCAL girls won the tip, but it was stolen away by the KVL girls. Babcock can't get it to fall, but her teammate, Kamek is there for the rebound, and it'll be knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with the KVL girls. It's already impressive, too. They got some basic plays, uh, obviously, you need. Ahart can't get the free throw line jumper to go, and it's stolen away. And the bucket will go. For McMillan from Bishop Ward High School, playing at her home court here at Kansas City, Kansas Community College. Brown can't get the shot to go, but she got her own rebound. Inside, it's stolen away by Babcock. Now Haley White up ahead will take it on her own, and she's fouled. Should we go in the line to shoot two? We are also doing two 20-minute halves. The clock will stop when the clock usually does stop, unlike summer basketball games. But so exactly like college basketball, I guess that is fitting since most of these girls are um, going to play college basketball or just graduating. White sinks both free throws for the KVL. And here, just about a minute in, the KVL has a 4-0 lead. And the KVL is represented uh, in the white, and the KCL is represented in the black, just in case there's any confusion there. And we have a foul underneath. It'll go on Sarah Ahart as the KVL. First one does not go. Talking about Sarah Earhart a little bit too. We got a chance to watch Tongi play twice against uh, the Lady Bobcats. And you know, she's their only big presence really at Tongi. She did a great job for them too. And she did. She was their senior leader as well as their really their heart of the team. And we'll have a jump ball underneath. Babcock will get it in to McMillan. McMillan tries to drive baseline, kicks off to Babcock. Won't go. 
And then stolen right back by the KVL. Haley White with the long three doesn't go. Jay Hart at range. Down. Waldrop with the steal. She'll give it up top and stolen away here once again by the KVL. That's what Haley White was really able to do all season for the Pirates is shoot the three ball. I know that's what killed the Lady Bobcats when they would play them. You have, you know, the bigs to watch out for from Piper, and then Haley White can sneak in there and hit some of those deadly threes. Inbounded to Kamek, but she lost the handle, so it'll go back to the KCAL. Knocked out of bounds here by Babcock, I believe, and it'll stay with the KCAL. Here, two and a half minutes in, the KVL has a 4-1 lead. And another steal for the KVL. So here early on, the defensive pressure by the KVL is... Wrecking havoc for the KCAL as Kamek gets the layup to go there. And Ahart's been doing a great job on defense for the KVL. She's been in several um, interrupted passes and stuff like that as she gets a steal down there, creating that layup. McMillan called for the foul. Verdon's over there coaching up one of his players. That's what I really like to see, too, just treating this like an actual game, you know. Because a lot of the time, you know, NBA All-Star game, and obviously this isn't the same caliber type of players, but it's just uh, over fantasize, I guess. You know, the ultimate dream team, and it's almost boring to watch sometimes, you know. Ahart drives, will kick it out to Babcock. Babcock with the long two. Gales will bring it up for the KCAL. She'll take a long two, won't go, rebounded by Haley White. McMillan couldn't get it to go, and I believe McMillan knocked it out of bounds, so it'll go back to the KCAL. Scales with the ball now. She is from Schlegel High School. Jumper won't go, so it will go back to the KVL up ahead. Babcock once again gets it to fall. And the difference right now in this game is defense and KVL is just getting their shots to drop. The KCL is taking great shots. They're just not dropping. Another steal for the KVL. Sarah Ahart will go coast to coast, but she's fouled on the way up, so she'll be at the line to shoot two. And I don't want to hear anyone say there's no incentives in this game, you know, no motivation to play this game. There definitely is, first of all, seniors. It's the last high school basketball game you're ever going to play in your entire career. Second of all, you kind of got bragging rights, you know, league versus league. Uh, who's better, you know, who stacks up better against the other team? Neither free throw falls for Ahart. And Scales will bring it up the court for sh the KCAL once again. Go inside. Won't go. Kamek there for the rebound. Go up ahead to Babcock once again. Left-handed layup goes. And man, the KBL has a 10-point lead. Talking about early domination. I know Casey said something about size. Today, and Babcock really doesn't. She's got some height. Uh, it's really showing off here in the first half. A 
Another steal for the KVL. KVL very active on defense here. Haley White drives, tries to put it up, but it was blocked. Whole new five checking in for the KBL. Appears a KCL player is injured, not quite for sure who. Take a time out here. And so far, man, the KVL is dominating on the offensive side, just taking great shots. And that's not to say that KCL isn't, because they definitely are. Um, Casey and I know plenty of times just teams get streaky, you know. KCL can be back in this just like that, especially with the type of caliber players they have. The ball would be going the KVL way, I believe. And the second five coming in for the KVL, as I mentioned earlier, that's no way meaning that they are the second, you know, tier of all stars in this girl all star team. Actually, yeah. Uh, I saw on David Brock's Ask FM, he asked, who do you think the MVPs are? And he said, this is what I like about these types of games, you know. Anyone can, you know, get heated up at any time. You never know. And it looks like we have everything cleaned up, so we'll get back to action. Will be the KCAL ball. Gales will take the three. Can't get it to fall. Leggett for the KBL brings it up. She was the star of the Mill Valley team. Bennett will take the long two. Won't go. So the KCAL will bring it back down the court. Scales drives, puts it up, and one. Hopefully that can get things going for the KCL, give them some fire and take advantage of maybe the second five that it's not been used to playing because you notice that the KCL has three, sub and three subs and uh, the uh, KVL has five. So that obviously will be an advantage towards the KBL, but also a disadvantage right away because, you know, these girls haven't been playing basketball for a while. Bennett finds a hole in the fast break and gets that bucket to go as the lead is nine for the KVL. Drive won't go, rebound blocked. Now stolen back away, and that will go for King. Bennett takes another shot, it won't go. Now up ahead to Scales. Scales drives is fouled. It'll, she'll go to the line to shoot two.
Misses the back end of that one. Legan now drives with the Euro step. Can't get it to fall. Reed got the loose ball but wasn't able to put it in. Scales with a long three, doesn't go. Now stolen away. And King gets a long two to go. Just like I said, the KCL can come back just like that. Taking advantage of the second five from the girls all-stars team from KC KBL. Navarez is fouled here, so she'll be at the line to shoot two. Second one won't go. Maddie McDowell there for the rebound. Passes off to Bennett, but it's blocked. Scales lost the handle on the pass. Scales so far is putting the, the team on her back right now for the KCL, clawing and trying to get back in this one. That shot from Leggett won't go. And Scales will bring it up for KCAL once again. King now over to Yang, back to King. Stolen away once again by the KVL. McDowell underneath, gets the left-handed layup to go. Great move there by Maddie McDowell. That's, that's very hard to do to adjust in mid-air, adjust your shot, because you could tell she wanted to go up with that right hand, but threw it up with her left. Great job. Three won't go. King there for the rebound. King with the shot, sinks it. I believe that is King's second jump shot of the game, fourth point. McDowell blocked underneath. Leggett takes the three, doesn't go. Brown there for the rebound for the KCAL. No foul called and it'll go out of bounds off the KVL so it'll stay with the KCAL. We got the starting five back for the KVO back into this game. Looks like they're each getting about five minutes apiece. That's a great advantage that the KVL has as Brox is able just to roll them in and roll them out. It looks like the KVL is now in a 2-3 zone. I don't, I don't mind seeing the 2-3 zone against KCL. KCAL right now is I don't know how well they can shoot the three ball forcing them outside a little bit ball is knocked out of bounds off the KCAL stays with the KVL Sarah Ahart to throw it in for the KVL she's from Tonganoxy Haley White now at the ball Piper Sr. Babcock kicks it back out to White. White with the long three. Can't get it to fall. 
I wanted to say that was going in. That looked like it was going in from the angle I had. That one was knocked out of bounds by White. Yang gets it in underneath, and the bucket won't go. Got a collision there in the basket, both going up for the rebound. And that's, you know, that's how you know this game's serious. They're not out there just to goof around. You know, they're taking this as a serious game, and I really like that personally as a spectator. KVA, KVL now with a seven point lead. King can't get that one to go, and Ahart with the rebound. The KVL will push, they have numbers. But McMillan lost the handle. Scales can't get the three to go, rebounded. Man, like I said earlier, this is a serious game. It's great to see KCL, you know, it almost looks like they're starting to break down. You see a lot of the players huffing and puffing. Like I said earlier, this is a great advantage that the KBL has and Brock's has just right off the bat without even playing the game, you know, without even seeing the talent of the players, just, just you know, how deep is your bench? And we all know successful teams down the road have a deep bench. White will take the free throw line. Jumper won't go. So now Scales brings it back up the court for the KCAL. She'll take the shot. Airballed. And it'll go back to the KVL. Wallace. Now checks in for the KCAL. She is from Schlegel High School. White takes the three once again. Won't go. Wallace there for the rebound right in the game. Shot won't go. Brown there for the rebound. And Kamek steals it away. They'll call a jump ball. It'll stay with the KCAL. Got 740, 54, excuse me, remaining in the first half. Waiting for an MVP from either team to emerge to take over this game. Ahart drives, is blocked. Now McMillan is fouled. Let's say it was on the floor. And talking about the MVP too, uh, in my personal opinion, it'd be I'd go out there, you know, I'd be balling out, trying to do all I could, not necessarily shooting, scoring up points, you know, but helping my teammates out, sharing the love. Uh, I think it'd be a really cool thing and an honor to say you're the MVP of the KVL and the KCL. Scales kicks off to Wallace, nice pass. Kamek was fouled going up. So she'll be at the line to shoot two. First is short for Kamek. You wouldn't see that earlier in the game. Most of the girls were making at least the front end of their free throw. You could just tell that this is wearing them a little bit. And two 20-minute halves is definitely longer than what they played. By it's going to be a total of eight minutes to the entire game than what they played in high school. So that'll be a really interesting factor.
Scales with the ball now will kick it over the baseline. And Cushenberry gets it to go. She is from Atchison High School. Vernon sends in a sub for the KCL. Gales brings the ball up once again for the KCAL. Cushenberry with the shot won't go. It's knocked out of bounds by the KCAL. It'll go back to the KVL. Now, obviously, since these players have not been with each other for you know, a couple of years, like they, they have been with their regular teammates, it's kind of hard to set up an offense. It's kind of hard to know what you know each other likes. And that's who the winner of this game will be, is who figure out each other's niches you know, early on. Scales with a nice pass to Wallace, but she can't get it to go. Now Scales with the three, can't get it to roll in. The KVL will push. McMillan can't get the three to fall. Layup won't go, Kamek there for the rebound. And Sarah Hart drives, pulls up, sinks it. So the KVL has extended their lead to seven. Here with 5.15 left in the first half. And once again, you have David Brox able to throw in his next five at the next five minute mark. And how great that is. McMillan will take the shot. Can't get it to fall. Ahart there. Saves it. Kamek fouled. So she'll be at the line to shoot two. A great hustle play there by Ahart. You usually see players, you know, just give up, let it go out of bounds, especially in a game like this that doesn't, you know, mean a whole lot since there's no other season, no other games after it, but great play. So we got all the new 5-7 in. Once again, with 4.55 remaining, so about every five minutes. Reed with the rebound, and she'll take the three. Won't go. I can tell you, the KCL might be in some trouble here as this KVL team obviously just subbed in, got a great rest. But Scales was able to drive in and get a layup. So hopefully the KCL can, you know, muster up some energy right now. Madison McDowell drives, kicks it out to Reed. Reed now is fouled. So she'll be at the line to shoot two. That foul will go on Cushenberry. That's her second. Kaitlyn Reed was really the heart and soul of this Bonner Braves team. And I believe they did have a pretty decent year. So now the lead is back up to seven after the Reed free throws here. Four, 15 left in the first half. And travel called. Lege will give it off to Maddie McDowell. McDowell drives. Can't get the layup to go. It's 
Scales tries to get it into Cushionberry. A little too high. Going back to once again, you know, I'm sure if they be they were playing with each other all year, that pass would have been automatic, but it's just tough when you get into a game situation like this. And you can kind of see somewhat on Vernon's team, the KCL, some different personalities kind of button heads here. Bennett gets that layup to go to extend the lead to nine. And this is where Brox uh, with the KVO can just press on that gas pedal and don't look back. And keep going as obviously I said, the KCL is obviously getting extremely tired. Yang gets it into Scales. Now Scales drives, kicks it over to King. She's unable to handle it. And we go back to the KBL. KCL needs to get something going before half as we approach three minutes remaining. Establishing something before the break is very necessary. Uh, for the second team's half. You've seen plenty of times over the years where teams will start streaking late in the first half and come out second half hot and the game's over. Scales drives, spins, throws it up and gets it to go. Gets a nice little roll there. Almost went out of the front of the rim. Caitlin Reed misses the wide open layup and then gets the steal. Maddie McDowell gets on the board for the KVL. Caitlin Reed kind of laughs that one off. Cushionberry will pass it off inside, won't go. Bennett. Can't get the left-handed layup to go. Scales gets it up to Cushenberry. And Cushenberry gets that layup to go. Jump stop. I like that. That's why you teach the jump stop. That's why you teach your players the jump stop for that exact situation. McDowell takes the three. Doesn't fall. Reed there for the rebound. She can't get it to fall. And then Bennett is fouled. Vernon got two subs waiting on the sideline, uh, ready to go in for the KCL. Excuse me, KCAO, I said. Probably mushing it all together, King K KCL. <laughs> and this is definitely where size will take uh, we'll give the upper hand for the KVL. It's both bigs are out right now for the KCAL. Yang now with the ball for the KCL. She gets it inside to Brown. Now Leggett gives it off to Bennett, but Bennett mishandled the pass. And it'll go back to the KCAL. The man, just talking about the atmosphere here, though, for just just great support coming out for this All-Star game. And this really doesn't feel like an All-Star game. If you ever watch NBA and stuff, it's all flashy and lights. But this is a physical game. You know, there's been bodies on the floor. A little aggression between teams, you know. A little tension. I like it. Shot was blocked, and now Leggett will push for the KVL. She'll go all the way. And the lead is now 12 for the KVL. If no one's going to stop her. I just keep doing that over and over and over and over again. Another steal by the KVL. Leggett up ahead. Gets it to go once again. So now... The KVL has a 14 point lead here with just under 30 seconds to play. Yeah. 
drive kick over. Now King will take the shot. Can't get it to fall. Reed there for the rebound. And Reed is fouled. Reed, I believe, made both from the line last time. So let's see if she can again the second time. Bump this lead up to 16 before the half. Reed can't get the first to fall. Probably jinx or something like that. I've been known to be good at that kind of stuff. Reed gets the second, and now 10 seconds to go here in the first half. We'll see if the KCAL can cut into the lead here. Waldrop is fouled with two seconds to go here in the half. So she'll be at the line to shoot two. This would be a little bit of a moral victory for the KCAL if Waldrop can get these two free throws to go and cut into that lead. Just get something going. And she sinks both and now Maddie McDowell at the buzzer won't go. But at halftime the KVL leads 37 to 24. We will, be, we will see you again at the beginning of the second half of the 2015 UKC Girls All-Stars game.
Welcome back to the beginning of the second half. We apologize. We had to reboot our systems, but now we are back and ready to go. Free throws good there. And going back to the first half, we had the KVL starting off hot. Able to pull out to, uh, I believe it was an 11-point lead, but then the KCL came swimming right back when the second group of subs came in for the KVL as that three will go for Babcock. And the KCL story of the game has been Brox with definitely the deeper bench over on the KVL side as opposed to Vernon on the KCAL. And that's really been the main factor of this game. Kamek unable to get the layup to go and then she fouls Brown of the KCAL. The foul will actually go on McMillan playing on her home court here from Bishop Ward High School. Keep in mind as well, these fouls do count. A player can foul out of this game, and I love how this game is just as realistic as possible, and Shoe KC did a great job of making it as realistic as possible. <coughs> Waldrop can't get it to go. Kamek had the ball knocked out of her hand, so it'll stay with the KVL here. Ahart drives, lost it out of bounds. So now Scales will give it off to Waldrop, Waldrop to McCoy Overton, Overton can't get the shot to go. Ahar with the rebound. KCA was able to show their three-point shooting ability in between half years. The girls all-stars compete in a three-point shooting contest. And that's what they need to happen right now is they need to treat this almost like a three-point shooting contest but every basket goes in. Brown picks up her third foul for the KCAL. Kamek gets her own rebound. Can't get the left-handed layup to go. And steals it away. Is fouled, but can't get the layup to go. So she'll be at the line to shoot two more. Just called Hustle, going to willing to go get your own rebound. And once again, all these all-stars Girls are seniors playing their last high school basketball game. It's really a great thing that Shoot KC's been able to do. Let's bring all these girls back and play one more time. And like I said earlier in the first half, in somewhat of a dream team scenario for bragging rights or KVL and KCAO. Scales, long three won't go, and it's knocked out of bounds by KCAL, so it'll go back to the KVL once again. Here's 16.35 left in the second half. The KVL has an 18-point lead. Haley White will take the three. Doesn't go. And Waldrop brings it up for the KCAL. Scales off on the three. Scales has yet to hit from the three-point mark as well, and she was able to light it up in the three-point contest in the first round. Ball stolen away there by McMillan. Now Ahart will take the shot, won't go. Scales will walk it up for the KCAL.
Scales can't get to the shot to go. Babcock with the rebound for the KVL. McMillan over to Ahart. Ahart prematurely jumped, and now Babcock takes the three. McMillan is blocked, and now McCoy Overton brings it up for the KCAL. But the Euro step won't go. Haley White with the rebound, and now the KVL has numbers. And right now we are approaching the five-minute mark uh, in the second half, and Brox is able to roll in his second five, and both starting, both fives uh, for the KVL are both extremely solid, and Vernon will send in some subs for the KCAL. We got a full timeout from David Brox, and And uh, just talking about just the bench, as I said earlier, it's going to be really interesting to see how the KCL is able to respond as they didn't respond too well from it in the first half. And you can tell the KVL already has girls, you know, that are you know, ready to go, and that's the great thing about this rotation that David Brox has definitely towards his, towards his, his, his advantage. And the KVL and KCAL game isn't just bragging rights for the girls, it's bragging, bragging rights for David and Vernon. Coming out of the timeout is KCAL's ball. Waldrop will give it off to Yang here on the wing. Back to Waldrop. Back to Yang now. Yang will drive baseline. Tries to get it to King, but it's stolen away by Madison McDowell. Up ahead to Bennett. She lost the handle back to McDowell. McDowell is fouled. Hard fall there, and as I said earlier, there have been bodies on the ground, and this is a very aggressive game. Leggett takes the three. Won't go. KVL able to get the rebound, but... Leggett will be called for the travel, so it'll back, go back to the KCAL. The KVL has a 20-point lead. They just have the luxury of being able to pass the ball around and shoot basically whatever shot they want so the KCAL can prove that they're going to be able to put up points consistently, as the KVL has done. <laughs> Yang gets it over. To King now to Scales. Scales goes up, can't get it to fall. Leggett will push it up for the KVL. She goes coast to coast, gets it to go. The lead is now 22 for the KVL. McCoy Overton with the three doesn't go. She'll take another one. Doesn't go either. Goes back to the first half, too. KCL is not taking bad shots. They're just not dropping. This whole game could be a different story if half of the missed shots the KCL had has dropped. Leggett finds the rebound underneath and gets it to go. Right now, it would take a miracle for the KCAL to come back. I would agree, but don't count anything out in this All-Star game. I saw earlier KCA was able to come back from an 11-point lead. Now, obviously, this lead is a bit more daunting and more of a mountain to climb. Ball stolen away by Madison McDowell. And she gets the layup to go. And stuff like that, that's just uh, that just not good for the morale of the KCAL. You can just tell, like, layups like that are wearing on them. Another steal for the KVL. Leggett 
once again. And now Vernon will call a timeout here. The KBL is high fives all around as the KCL players are slow to get back. And you can tell that you know, this, these players do not like losing, which is obviously why they are in the all-star game is their competitiveness. And let's just hope that that does not get the best of them and they are able to come back. Uh, and really right now they're just playing for the dignity of the KCAL. Gales now working against Leggett will take the long two. Can't get it to fall. Navarez traveled for the KVL, so it'll go back to the KCAL. McCoy Overton brings it up for the KCAL. She is from Sumner Academy. Scales now gets the layup to go. Little floater there is a nice looking shot. And is the shooter for the Sumner team. Well, I guess not anymore since she's getting ready to graduate. Excuse me, Schlegel. Leggett with a nice spin move, but she can't get it to go. Gets her own rebound. Can't get that one to go. And now Bennett gets rebound underneath, and she gets it to fall. And, man, you can tell these KVL girls are starting to feel it. and They don't look tired at all, and they're about a minute away from being taken out, according to David Brock's rotation. It's kind of like Kentucky's little five they had going at the beginning of the season, yeah. Yeah, and throughout the tournament, you had the platoon, the white, pl white platoon, and the blue platoon. Reed with the step back thought about it, but passed it up. Now Leggett will take the long three. Can't get it to go. McDowell for the, there for the rebound. Nice pass into Bennett, and she gets it. The layup to go, and now the lead. Is 28 for the KVL. And it's really great to see how well these KVL girls are able to work with each other and, you know, really read off of each other. It really speaks volumes of what the coaches are able to do in the KVL and obviously the KCL too uh, with these girls and what types of players they are. And we'll now have a running clock the rest of the game. Yang gives it off to Scales. Scales working against Leggett will kick it off to McCoy Overton. Back to Scales. Scales to Yang. Yang blocked. Got a new five coming in for David Brox. And, man, that's just a scary thing to see there. It's a new five, not even dripping in sweat. McMillan take the baseline jumper, gets it to fall. So lead is back up to 28 once again for the KVL. Scales drives, can't get it to go. Kamek there for the rebound. 
And Sarah Ahart with the ball will give it up to Babcock. Babcock with the right hook can't get it to fall. Ahart can't get it to go, but Kamek is there to clean up the glass for the KVL. And most likely the KVL will be winning this girls' all-stars game. So now you gotta start thinking in your head who's gonna be the MVP of this KVL team. And there are a lot of likely candidates for this KVL team. You know, there's not one player that stands out. The scoring has been spread around. Uh, very unselfish players on this KVL team. And that's what, you know, that's how good teams are. You like to see spread out scoring among players. You don't like one player doing all the scoring for you every single night. And that's what makes a team so dangerous because you do not know who is able to get hot because potentially everyone is. White splits the pair of free throws, so the lead is 31 for the KVL All-Stars. McCoy Overton can't get the runner to go. Haley White there for the KVL. Fast break for the KVL, and Babcock gets the left-handed layup to go. I would have to say, in my mind, the number one candidate uh, for my MVP award would be Babcock. She's played a great game offensively and defensively. We'll have a foul called here. This will go on Kamek. Inbounded to McCoy Overton. Now the Cushionberry. Now Scales will take a three. Can't get it to fall. Battle underneath. Cushionberry can't get it to go. Sarah Ahart with the rebound up ahead to McMillan. And she gets that to fall. So now the KVL has doubled the KCAL score. Cushionberry long on the three. McCoy Overton there for the putback and one. So she'll be at the line for one. Haley White off to Babcock. Babcock underneath is fouled. And this game is getting really heated. There's no, no backing down between these two teams. And once again, we got another rotation in after these five minutes and this starting five have seen their last minutes on the court in their high school career. Babcock sinks the first. And the second as well. Cushion Barry will give it off to Wallace now to Scales, and she gets the tough shot to go. That was impressive. Navarre has lost the handle there on the wing. He goes out of bounds back to the KCAO. And seeing how well this KVL team is working together, I mean, they're all sharing high fives and laughing and stuff. Just think about this if this was an actual team. If you got to play a season with this team, how scary that would be for opposing teams. This KVL team 
has outplayed and outmatched the KCAL all night. And that just shows the depth of the talent in the KVL. It also shows how hard the decisions were to make this all-star team. Ball goes out of bounds off the KCAL. It'll stay with the KVL. Bennett underneath can't get it to go. She's blocked. Yang with the rebound there. And she gets it poked away. And Madison McDowell stepped on the baseline there, so it'll go. Go back to the KCAO. Here, 2.45 left in the game. It's all KVL, 72 to 39. Scales over to Cushenberry, but Cushenberry is fouled by Caitlin Reed. Gales takes a three, can't get it to go. Reed there for the rebound. Tries to go coast to coast, but can't get the layup to go. Now King up ahead for KCAL. Spin move, can't get the shot to go. Now Bennett is fouled, so she'll be at the line to shoot two. And these free throws should run the clock down significantly. First one will fall for Bennett. Second one doesn't go, and Cushenberry is there for the rebound for the KCAL. Scales now over to Yang, but Yang is unable to get to the pass, and it'll go back to the KVL. And also from a coaching perspective for uh, Brox and Vernon, it is a kind of a cool thing because in reality, it is almost like a draft. You know, they're drafting their players. They're molding their team. It's something I would love to do one day. Kaylin Reed will give it off to Leggett. Leggett pulls the trigger for three. And that, you could just set the cherry right on top of there. And maybe with a few sprinkles as the KVL is trouncing the KCAL. Yang for three. Long, and it'll go out of bounds. Back to the KVL here. Leggett will wind down the clock and the KVL defeats the KCAL 76 to 39. We will see you at the beginning of the boys all-star game 2015 Shoe KC.